When calculating limits in infinity algebraically, you will encounter various forms of the answer. And from the form of the answer, you should be able to determine what the answer should be. So for example, maybe you take a limit. So let's pretend we're taking the limit as x goes to infinity of our function. And say you see that the form is going to be 0 over a non-zero number, something like 0 over 7. Well, OK, that one's not that strange. 0 over 7, that ought to be 0. Now say you encounter a new problem where the form of the answer is 7 divided by 0, a non-zero number over 0. What does that tell you? What's happening there? Well, if we're going to a number here, this would be a vertical asymptote. And if we're going to infinity, we would have an answer, again, just like a vertical asymptote, of infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist. If you encounter 0 over 0 as the form of your answer, just like in the last section, this is going to mean do more algebra, because this is an indeterminate form. It's something we cannot tell just by looking at the form what the answer should be. If you run into a number divided by infinity, something like 7 over infinity, which is not itself a number, but this is just a form of an answer, this is always going to give you 0. Because if you divide a fixed number by bigger and bigger values, it gets closer and closer to 0. And this is true even if it's negative infinity that you're dividing by. And if your answer is infinity over infinity, this is where things can get somewhat interesting. What do you think that should be? A lot of people would guess that this is 1. But it doesn't have to be. And the reason is because there are different sizes of infinity. This is kind of strange. And people have whole fields of mathematics studying different kinds of infinity. But for our purposes, for example, the limit as x goes to infinity of x is infinity, and so is the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared. But the x squared function gets to infinity faster. And since it gets to infinity faster, it's going to be, in, our, in some sense, a bigger infinity. So what this means is that if you have infinity divided by infinity, you could actually have all kinds of different answers. So you could have limit as x goes to infinity of x over x squared. That looks like infinity over infinity. But if you simplify this algebraically, it's the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. Now it's a number divided by infinity, so it's just 0. But on the other end of the spectrum, if we look at the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared over x, that's also infinity over infinity. But when you take and you reduce that algebraically, you get x over 1, which is infinity over 1 which is infinity, which leads to another interesting rule about infinity. Infinity divided by a fixed number is always going to be infinity. Half of infinity is still infinity. Half of the biggest thing you can think of is still the biggest thing you can think of. But we can even have infinity over infinity limits that give us a fixed number, something like pi x divided by x. That's infinity over infinity, but when you simplify it, it's just pi. Pi is a constant, so it doesn't change no matter what we do to x. So the moral of the story here is that infinity over infinity is also an indeterminate form. And just like 0 over 0, infinity over infinity is going to require you to do more algebra. So we keep using this word indeterminate form. What do we mean by that? Say we've taken a limit, and we've gotten the following forms as our answers. How do we know? Is the, are these indeterminate, or should I be able to find an answer? Well, infinity times infinity, we're taking the biggest thing you can think of and multiplying it by the biggest thing you can think of, making it bigger. Well, that's still going to be infinity. That's no big deal. But if you take something like 0 times infinity, 0 is very small. Anything times 0 ought to give you 0. 0 times a number 
is zero, right? But a number times infinity, two infinities, three infinities, that should be infinity. So now we've got a conflict. It seems like if zero was a number, we'd get infinity, a non-zero number. And if infinity were the number, we take zero times any really big number, we should get zero. But we can't have zero and infinity both as our answer. That doesn't make any sense at all. And what this tells us is that zero times infinity is an indeterminate form. A non-zero number times infinity, though, we take the biggest number you can think of, multiply it by 5, still the biggest number you can think of. So that one isn't a problem. That one's infinity. Similarly, infinity plus infinity, take the big, two, the biggest thing you can think of, add it to itself, it's still infinity. Infinity minus infinity, though, that again is a little bit of a different story. If you take infinity and you subtract a number from it, infinity minus 3, that's still going to be infinity. But on the other hand, if you take a non-zero number and you subtract infinity, take 3 minus infinity, that's going to be negative infinity. So again, here we have a conflict. We can't have both answers at once, so we have an indeterminate form. Infinity plus a number, though, that just gives you infinity. It's impossible for us to go through every possible form of an answer that you might have. So the idea here is for you to think about whether there's a conflict in what the answer could possibly be, or if there's no conflict at all and you can just know what the answer is. If there's a conflict, that means you have an indeterminate form, and an indeterminate form always means do more algebra.